हेलो फ्रेंड वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर अजीत जायसवाल फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एंथ्रोपोलॉजी पाण्डिचेरी सेंट्रल यूनिवर्सिटी पुडुचेरी टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट ए वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट मॉड्यूल इन टाइटल होमोनाइजेशन प्रोसेस अंडर पेपर बायोलॉजिकल एंथ्रोपोलॉजी इन दिस मॉड्यूल वी आर वी वुड this module help the student to understand the concept of homogenization process this module also explain the type of anatomical changes occurred in human being during the course of evolution it also explain the type of physiological changes occurred in human being during the course of evolution this module explain the type of behavioral changes occurred in human being during the course of evolution so let me give you a introductory information about the changes that we have seen in the case of physiological in the case of behavioral and so many that we call it as a homogenization process the homogenization process may be viewed as a evolutionary transformation from pre hominid to a hominid status in course of evolution in course of human evolution a process that has occurred in the hominoid line since its divergence from the last common hominid ancestor shared with any ape like characteristic like ape living living ape it is also the homogenization process is also called as aeromorphosis or anagenesis the original meaning of the word homogenization was the emergence of human among other living things the original it means that the threshold which pre human had to cross before becoming human this process concerned the nature and adoptive significance nature and adoptive significance of anatomical major anatomical and major physiological changes or transformation in the evolution of body from ape to a higher primate to the single variable species homo sapiens initially the term was term has a restricted meaning and implied emergence of modern human different from all the other form currently however the term has broadened and include all those aspect of structural and behavioral changes that occurred in the hominid line finally leading to the emergence of modern human the modern human group the changes that has occurred that have occurred in the evolutionary direction or evolutionary development of mankind since its divergence from the last common ancestor and are shared with any living ape can be categorized into two group first group that is anatomical and physiological changes second one is the behavioral changes now let discuss about the anatomical and physiological changes the anatomical and physiological changes may be visible in fossil and it may not be visible in fossil as modification of hand and arms for more effective carrying and tool use changes in the skin and skin gland reduction in body hair enlargement of brain continuous sexual reception of female reproduction reduction and remodeling of the jaw partial reorganization of the brain modification of the vocal tract these are the changes that is physiological in nature there are number of behavioral changes that we can see which is directly detectable by archaeology but there are certain behavioral changes which are not at all directly detectable detectable by archaeology increasing dependence on manufactured equipment and tools they are detectable languages is not detectable suitable control on disp display of emotion this is also not at all detectable great increase in expressing ideas this is also non detectable similarly we can see the changes in the hunting and meat eating behavior in this case we find that there is a cooperation and division of labor increasing interdependence through sharing of food there is a great increase in the social bonding 
mechanism through some social means like marriage and marriage kinship reciprocation. Reorganization of behavior around a camp or home base, base is also important feature. There is a great increase in symbolism for the learning purpose. So, the changes that we have discussed earlier or we can say that all changes, some change, such changes can be broadly grouped into five important headings like bipedalism, whether they are walking on a two leg, hand manipulation and tool use, what is called as manual dexterity, modification of jaws and teeth as there is a continuous change in climate and related with that there is change in food habit also take place. Enlargement of brain, that also that is a very very much important feature which gave ample amount of evidence of evolution. Change in the vocal tract that we studied by, by studying the brain. Change in development of language, development of symbolism and speech. In this figure we can clearly see the evolutionary changes that took place in the in, in this in homo. Or we can say that we can clearly remark all such changes which can be seen from Australopithecus till modern Homo sapiens and their phylogenetic divergence from one another. We can see the changes in bipedalism behavior, hand manipulation and tool use behavior. We can see the changes in the jaws and teeth and also we can there is a clear cut evidence or information we can also find about the enlargement of brain. Important early modern Homo sapiens sites. The important early modern Homo sapiens sites are were distributed in almost great part of Africa, Europe, and Asia. In East Africa, the important sites are Harto, Homo, Lesitoli. Whereas in South Africa, the important sites are Border Cave, then Klesis River Moth. In Israel, the sites are related sites related to Homo sapiens are School, then Kafza. Whereas in Australia, the important sites of Homo sapiens is Lake Mungo. In Europe, there is a number of sites which shows the evidence of evolution of uh, Homo sapiens like in Romania, Czech Republic and France. In France we find the evidence of uh, Cro-Magnon skull or Cro-Magnon fossil. Let's first discuss about bipedalism. Analysis of post-cranial element of Australopithecus africanus Australopithecus afarensis, Australopithecus remidus clearly established bipedalism to be one of the oldest of all hominid characteristics. The age of the earliest variant of Australopithecus is estimated to be about 4.4 million years ago. The appearance of this group took place perhaps 1 million years after the separation of ancestral line leading to great apes and human. According to Stanford, Australopithecus romidus was a biped. Its lower body was clearly adopted for walking on the ground, though they may have continued to use trees for gathering fruits and also for shelter at night. Post-cranial elements, especially limb and pelvis anatomy, shows characteristics of bipedal adaptation. In all such features, Australopithecus afarensis was more human-like than ape. In addition to the post-cranial element, the site called Laitoli in Tanzania, footprints of Australopithecus afarensis have existed around 3.77 million year ago is another proof of bipedalism. There are however certain features possessed by afarensis such as shorter hind limb, longer foot, longer toes, etc. that suggest that 
Australopithecus bipedalism was different from human bipedalism. Such differences in the locomotory behavior can be explained due to the habitat supposed to have existed in Eastern Africa woodland, bushland and dry savanna, with patches of forest along river and lakes. Thus, they have to live somewhat less on the tree and more on the ground. We can clearly see the, the evolutionary changes take place in the bipedalism of apes and Australopithecus or Homo group in the next figure. Reflect the figure in which we can clearly see the differences between Australopithecus afarensis and Homo erectus, which shows the evolutionary changes, especially in the form, especially in their morphological as well as anatomical characteristics. Even though the Australopithecus afarensis, called as walker and tree climber, they show some similarities and differences with Homo erectus which are also called as walker and endurance runner. We can see the changes especially in the thoracic and the pelvic region in a pelvic region that shows the evolutionary transformation has taken place between the two. There may be several reasons behind this. Hand anatomy and tool use. The earliest evidence of hand manipulation can be found in Australopithecus afarensis. The hand proportion of the member of this group approximates human, pro human proportions but differ from those of women in having fingers more curved suggesting greater power grip. The precision grip was greater among them compared to that of chimpanzee but less, lesser than that of Homo. Australopithecus afarensis was spending more time on the land than on the trees. Hence, hand, hand anatomy has had started foreshadowing the characteristics of hands of Homo and differentiate and different from those of apes. Hominids with their manipulative hand, precision grip and contemplating brain had been able to expand their ecological niche so far beyond the physical capabilities inherent in their makeup. One that no other animal has ever had the potential to achieve. The classical view of anthropologists has been that the use of tools led to the distinction between human and apes. Other now feel that environmental influence and adaptation to non arboreal ecological niche were more important for early hominid evolution however these divergent views are ultimately resolved recent paleoanthropological finding reflect that the use of tools antidates the origin of the big brain homo sapiens by at least a million and a half year in other words Tool use and tool making developed before hominid brain capacity had undergone undergo remarkable increase. The use of tools by primitive hominids may in fact have been a major factor in the evolution of a cerebral cortex and higher intelligence. The elaborate brain of Homo sapiens may be consequence of culture as much as it cause. Homonization process with respect of cultural attainments had set in much before the modern man appeared on the earth. Old one industry of certain earliest Homo habilis clearly proved the point. Homo erectus had not only perfected stone tools considerably but had also learned how to control and use fire. As revealed by radio isotope dated hearth in caves, with fire human could cook their food, they could keep themselves warm in cold weather, they could ward off predator 
and they could light up the dark to see. The hearth no doubt promoted the development of social organization and allowed an opportunity for the beginning of communication through spoken language. Neanderthal people practice ritual burning, burial, suggesting that the concept of soul had developed by that time. Crew Magnan people began constructing their own dwellings and were living in communities. The cultural attainment in terms of tool making and tool use that characterized modern human had thus set in at least 2 million years ago, for which there exists sufficient proof in archaeology since the time of Homo habilis. Now let's try to find out the information related to modification of jaws and teeth. Apes are characterized by large and thick enamel teeth, heavy jaw and jaw muscle, large canine and high cut molar and a higher ratio of chick teeth area to body weight compared to that of Australopithecus, Paranthropus and Homo habilis. Australopithecus remidus had teeth which resembled to those of Homo in some feature. They were smaller with thin enamel with reduced canine. The dentition in general resembled to those of chimpanzee in some aspect. Similarly, Australopithecus afferensis dentition had some ape-like characteristics and some Homo-like features. The incisors were chimpanzee-like but canines were low-crowned and incisor like Australopithecus africanus had dentition similar to those of afferensis except that the cheek teeth were slightly bigger. In the case of Paranthropus or in Paranthropus, front teeth were smaller than those of Australopithecus afferensis and Australopithecus africanus. In contrast, the rear teeth, jaw and jaw muscle of this group were more massive compared to that of the Australopithecus group. In Homo habilis, the teeth were similar to, that, similar to those of Australopithecus afferensis. Dental variation among these hominids are peculiar. There is a gradual reduction in size of the front teeth, whereas there is a gradual increase in the size of the cheek teeth in case of Paranthropus. Such variation in, in hominid dentition is explained by the climatic changes that occurred around 2.5 million years ago. During this period, the savanna grassland covered a larger portion of the earth. This change in ecology led to a change in the dietary pattern of the existing hominid group, that is, change in the savanna grassland. In the case of Homo habilis or we can also call as handyman which is originated about 2 to 2.5 million year ago however do not show enlarged chick teeth, jaw and jaw muscle. As habilis used to prepare their food outside mouth the animal is also not as thick as in Paranthropines. To conclude, Paranthropines, while displaying a hominid pattern in general, have larger cheek teeth because of the ecological reason, like a change in the savanna grassland, grassland over a larger portion of the earth that lead to change in their pattern of dietary of the existing hominid group. With the advent of tools, the teeth were put to different selection pressure and therefore the Homo habilis has smaller chick teeth in comparison to Paranthropines. Gradually there is a reduction in the cusp height of the teeth, a prominent feature of the apes. The ratio between cheek teeth area to the body weight was high in Paranthropines, whereas it is constant for later hominids. 
Humanization process in dental morphology thus consisted of first reduction in size of the teeth, then changes in the jaw and jaw muscle, reduction in cusp height of the teeth and constant cheek teeth area. These features are seen to begin within Australopithecus and Homo habilis. We can see the changes of changes in the dent jaws, teeth and jaw muscle in the next picture. This figure explains the humanization process especially in this in the skull and skull and the lower jaw and upper jaw regions along with the dentition. We can see the changes from Neanderthal man to Cro-Magnon man and from Cro-Magnon man to modern sapiens. See the upper part of the skull as well as the dentition which shows there is a marked evolutionary changes take place in the lines of Homo. Enlargement of brain. Earlier paleoanthropologists believed that evolution of human brain occurred after bipedalism and changes in the dentitions were complete. However, recent studies on Indo cranial caste indicate that encephalization process progressed along with other changes that characterize hominids. In the later stage of hominid evolution, the brain evolution consist, consisted more of relative growth of brain and body size that is allomatic growth rather than simple reorganization. So, the recent studies on endocranial caste, it clearly indicate the encephalization process progressed along with other changes that characterize hominid. Indo caste studies of Homo habilis clearly indicate that its brain volume is significantly greater than that those of Australopithecus. Body weight of these hominids have been estimated from fossil and the encephalization quotient determined by computing brain size relative to their body sizes. The period between 4 to 2 million years reflect insignificant change in brain volume as Australopithecus afarensis and Australopithecus africanus showed a brain volume below 450 cc whereas those of Homo habilis were between 2 to 1.5 million years ago in the range of 650 to 700 cc. The humanization process that involved evolution of hominid brain can be said to have resulted during this period between 2 to 1.5 million years ago. We can see the changes of our evolutionary process, uh, process of uh, encephalizations in the earlier figure also and uh, about the different parts of the brain which, which perform different role we can see this information in the next figure. This figure explains the brain structure of Homo sapiens. The leveling of this figure explains the area and the role performed by different regions of the brain like the broca region, premotor region, secondary motor regions, primary motor cortex, somatosensory cortex, posterior parietal cortex, spatial association area, secondary visual cortex, verbal associated areas, area which is primarily related with visual cortex, then vernic area, auditory cortex, inferior temporal lobe which is associated with visual, then prefrontal cortex which is related with volatile associated areas. So, we can clearly get the idea of motor area, sensory area and associated area which will be helpful in explaining the phenomena of encephalization of if encephalization process of brain and also a specific area of speech and language.
Speech and language is also a one of the important changes that we have seen during the process of encephalization or changes that take, took place in the hominid lion. Speech, it is an apparatus of human, consists of two physiological components. First, the subglottal system and second, the larynx. The subglottal system that include the lungs and associated muscle, which provide the power for speech production. Whereas the larynx, which communicate the subglottal system to upper sublaryngeal tract itself, which modulates acoustic energy generated by first two system. The, the human supralaryngeal airways differ from that of other primates. The area of the brain specialized for language and speech are in the region surrounding the sylvian fissure of left hemisphere. This area contains the cortical center for auditory perception and motor control of face, mouth and larynx for speech production. The motor area for speech and for sound perception is closely located to Broca's area immediately in front of the motor area or the language area and vernic area immediately behind and to the side of the auditory area. The structure and neural control mechanism necessary for the complex pattern of human speech seem to have evolved during the last 1.8 million year ago. The comparative anatomy of the living primates and hominid fossil suggests that evolution of supralaryngeal vocal tract probably started in the early African population of Homo erectus. However, the humanization process took some time to complete. There is a definite proof that hominids from the Israel sites had definite human supralaryngeal airways. Indocast studies of such form indicate that their neural mechanism had no appro appropriately developed, whereas those of from hominids of Israel sites were capable of producing human speech. Let's discuss about the language. Language is an adaptation unique to human, but its biological basis is very difficult to define. Although there is no anatomical evidence for a new organ, it is clear that there exists certain area such as Broca area and Wernick area for language. Since language leaves no fossil record, the evidence for its origins are circumstantial. Comparative linguistics are, was used to, to estimate a date for a single common language. The recent approaches, however, have used anatomical and archaeological information to suggest a date of origin for language. Anthropologists differ in the exact time of origin of language. One group argue for a relatively recent origin and correlate it with the appearance of modern Homo sapiens with modern sized brain and fully descendant vocal tract. Another group traces origin of language to Homo habilis when first appearance of tool and beginning of enlargement of brain took place. The two conditions have different consequences for the nature of mind. If the origin of language is considered, late linguistic changes in brain become secondary to the non-linguistic changes, allowing only little to the language to influence the structure of brain if its origin is considered early. It is logical to think that it passed through multitude of forms and had major language 
on evolution of brain and vocal tract the diverse language adaptation and its deep integration in human nature point to its ancient plan and it has been suggested that earliest language were singing accompanied with gesture so it has been clearly explained or suggested that the earliest language is related with or compiled with or related with singing along with gestures so student let's try to sum up the important points of this module as we have already discussed that the homologization process may be viewed as a evolutionary transformations or changes or development or transformation of a hominid population into a full hominid status or its changes from a pre-human to a modern human or primitive human to a modern human or the earliest form to the latest form in the early age of hominid evolution. It is a process that has occurred in a specific line called as hominid line. Since its divergence from the last common hominid ancestor which shared with any living apes. All the changes that we have discussed up till now can be grouped into five important headings. First, bipedalism, which is a very important characteristics that we have seen a changes starting from starting from Australopithecus till the Homo sapiens sapiens. We have clearly seen the relationship of erect posture, the freeness of the four limbs and their utilization for other purposes like the second changes, hand manipulation and tool use. The freeness of the hand make the, make the people to develop its, and its efficiency with the development of tools. Along with this, as we have seen, Continuously there is change in climate also take place, change in habitat take place, change in number of other features take place and there is a development of tools take place. Because of this we have seen a modification in jaws and teeth. All the changes that we have seen either in the case of bipedalism or in hand manipulation or in tool use or modification of jaws and teeth, these changes will simultaneously happen along with changes in the brain that is that now the change the brain become enlarged now the cranial capacity has brain has been increased from 300 400 to about 1350 and ultimately in some cases we find it even more than that along with the development of all these things we have seen the, the development in the concept of socialization development in the concept of domestication, development in the concept of production of food, development in the concept of development of village itself. When they start developing the, this, all these changes, we have seen they develop a symbolic changes in the vocal track also by developing a vocal symbolic words. Along with development of languages, the article, the language were initially symbolic in nature representative in nature, pictographic in nature and later it become a full-fledged speech which has a different words, words have their specific meaning and they started communicating between them. Thank you.